All right, today is a very exciting day because I'm gonna show you around my neighborhood where I live and just the few places I like to frequent and it is a really great neighborhood to live in. So I live in the areas of Fair Park and Lavender. I'm not gonna say exactly where, um, but I do think that it is a very up and coming neighborhood. A lot of people are starting to move in. A lot of my friends are curious about the area and wanted me to highlight some of the great spots that I love. Um, I have noticed recently there have been new shops popping up here and there, like a new 7-Eleven opened up at Aperia Mall. Um, I know many of you will think, oh, that's weird, like why does that matter? But I do think that when there are uh, convenience stores, it does kind of indicate that there is growth in that neighborhood. And um, you know, when you have like a Starbucks popping up or a McDonald's um, or 7-Eleven at Aperia Mall, I do think that these small shops make things a lot more convenient and more enticing for people to move there. So I'm gonna show you around my neighborhood and I hope you enjoy this video. I do think a lot of expats tend to live in areas like Somerset, River Valley, Tiang Bahru, or Clark Key, but I think this neighborhood is going to be more and more popular. It's not exactly in the city, but it's in the city fringe, and it's great because there is the Kalang River nearby. And for me, I love the idea of having water wherever I live with a view. Um, there are places to kind of explore, and I'm not constantly always in a very like expat heavy city or town. Um, I do kind of want like a good blend of like local and um, something that matches my lifestyle. Well, I'm kind of bummed, but this is another plant store that if you take a look at, they have a huge variety of plants. So I'm actually really impressed that they would close it and leave all these plants out. But I mean, look at this monstera, oh my god. This massive, massive monstera. And then they have like a, a white and green one too, it's so beautiful. And they have pelias too. I'm gonna definitely come back here when it's open. So I'm just going to do a fun exploration day today because a lot of the places I wanted to go to are closed but I just got a really good iced coffee so I think I'm in good shape to kind of just walk around the neighborhood and check things out so um, yeah take you guys around so a lot of people ask me Emily are you working <laughs> why do you have all this time to do all this stuff well my friends it's called time management just kidding um, in actuality, I've been very, like, not busy, but I have been busy with my own projects. So generally, I do wake up at 7 to 7.30 a.m. It's been this thing where I've ingrained it into my schedule, regardless of a Sunday morning. So I kind of just force myself to wake up and just be productive. Ooh, and this is my favorite ice cream vending machine because it actually sells the brown sugar and milk one. See what I was saying about new things being built? So there's another one coming called Beverly Hotel. I feel like this is a huge indication of people coming in or this being a very popular building. So I don't know, we'll see. It is surrounded by a lot of office buildings and HDBs, but I do feel like it has a lot of potential because it is close to the Lavender MRT. And if you look above, I do believe that's like a rooftop deck. I love the windows too. Look how large those windows are. It's going to be a really good hotel to be honest. Look how pretty these HDB buildings are. I always love the colors on these HDB buildings. And then you have another set of HDBs over here. So I would say the lavender area is quite nice. There's a lot of shops here. Right by the MRT, you have just a bunch of shops going down when you walk in. In this neighborhood, you have a lot of like canvas and hardware stores, um, especially in the lavender section. Supposedly, there's over a million HDBs in Singapore, and I'm pretty sure they're just continuing to build more and more. Um, honestly, I wouldn't mind living in an HDB. Oh, this is kind of cool. I've actually never seen a blue SG at a charging station. 
So this is one of the cars that you can rent. I don't know how to drive here in Singapore, but if I did, I would definitely try and drive one. I know Tesla is supposed to come in as well, so I wonder if they will also have the same charging stations with Blue SG as well because of how convenient it is. So yeah, um, I've never driven in Singapore. There's really no need to drive in Singapore. It's super expensive to own a car, let alone have a license. So for me, I just take public transportation or I just walk or I just grab everywhere, to be honest. Interesting. I didn't even know the People's Association headquarters was here. So I'm reading it and it's saying that formerly based at the former Kalang Airport building, the PA was established in 1960 to foster racial harmony and social cohesion in a young nation. So I'm going to go to City Square Mall because I need to use the restroom <laughs> and it's really hot. So I'm going to walk around in AC, but I'll show you around what type of shops there are and persuade you to live in such a beautiful neighborhood here. So obviously I like Ding Tai Fong and we're just gonna do a quick tour of this area and some of the shops that I really like. Oh and Decathlon is up there as well. Ooh, that's exciting. Heidi Lao is coming here on July 2021. Okay, and this one's wild because I haven't seen a Toys R Us in forever. And then on the top floor, they have the Food Republic, which is so cute because they make them look like little shop houses. There's a pretty good variety of food too. And this is a really good authentic uh, lasagna place. Super Dario Lasagna. They have a really good set lunch. Ooh, one of the best things I love too is that there's a wing stop in this mall. All right, cool. I'm going to explore Mustafa Center because it's a very popular center and I think there's just so much stuff to look inside. So I'll take you along my little vlog and just show you how many things you can find in Mustafa Center. They even have a buffet here. Okay, so I'm in Mustafa Center. You can literally find everything in here. It's kind of insane. Like everything that you think you want, it's here. They have it and they have it like in various formats like it's a massive massive building i'm gonna see how many floors there are but let's just go ahead like this entire row is all like health stuff health and beauty and oh man it just keeps going oh, it's just so much stuff oh sentinel oh my god i even found this which is funny because my dentist was the one who gave me this and i even found it here it's all Tiger Balm. They have an entire section dedicated to Tiger Balm. Work where it hurts. Um, look how much salon pass they have. Honestly, I don't even know what, like where I'm going. I'm just letting Mustafa Center tell me where to go and what to buy. There's still a lot of people shopping right now and they're like filling their carts with a bunch of stuff, but it's not so bad. I think on the weekend, it's probably packed. It's almost like this beautiful chaotic mess. Oh my God, they even have tapatio, they have chalua, and they have sriracha sauce. I think it's smart too that they zip tie the bags because there's just so much stuff and you never know who's bringing in what or taking out what. I think I'm just going to stop going to Fair Price and I'm going to start going to Mustafa Center because they literally have everything here. I'm going to check out a few of the other floors. So these are all the levels if you need to know them. Okay, I'm in the household item and just look how much stuff they have. Oh my goodness. I'm not going to lie, I'm actually considering buying one of these so I don't have to carry my heavy groceries around. Okay, I'm heading out of Mustafa Center. There's just too much stuff. I feel like I'm getting sucked into this like black, black hole. So I need to leave before it's too late. You know what I think too? God is fair because he put me in a really good family. My parents are awesome. My sister is awesome. My brother-in-law is awesome. Which is why God is fair. And I have very puffy hair. <laughs> God is fair. Hey everyone. Man, there are days where I really just want to shave off all my hair because it's 
getting a little bit too intense for me. I, I like really understand why guys just like to shave their heads and just be bald because frankly it might be easier than having to deal with all these little baby hairs. Whew. Okay, but anyways, I'm going to go to Raw Kitchen Bar to meet up with one of my good friends, Tracy. She's also from the Bay Area, and it'll be nice to connect with someone from home. We are able to dine out now in groups of two, so she is my satyr date. <laughs> so one of my favorite feelings is when it's done raining, and then it's just like... The air is breezy, there are rain puddles on the ground, and it just feels really nice and refreshing. It kind of reminds me of like San Francisco. Still a little bit too humid though, but I really do enjoy this feeling. It's a little bit nostalgic for me. And yeah, I'm just walking over to Kalong River right now. I'm gonna go to Raw Kitchen Bar to meet Tracy. And I'm a little bit early, so I might just like slowly walk around the river to get my steps in. So in the past three weeks, I was just figuring things out, whether to stay in Singapore or leave. And I think there are just so many factors and decisions in this process. And it's really hard because I felt like everyone wanted like a piece of me, if that made sense. Like everyone was constantly asking me what I was doing, what my plans were, people back home, people here in Singapore. And I completely understand and it's fine. A lot of people wanted to see me because they were afraid that I'd actually just like disappear um, and then fly home. But I think in those moments, I just wanted to be by myself. Like I wanted to do things on my own. I wanted to think. I didn't want people nagging me or prescribing or telling me things. So I really just kind of did my own thing for a while and only met people that I wanted to talk to or knew that they wouldn't prescribe. So I felt that was incredibly helpful. Sorry, my mask was like dropping. And I just went to places where I could actually think. And I spent less time on social media and online and spent more time writing and sitting by the water and like really reflecting. So yeah, I felt like all of this was incredibly valuable for me. And in this weird way, I felt like I was meditating. I was being more reflective and digging things up from the past that I didn't want to dig up for such a long time. And this has been like this ongoing journey. And one of the things I also realized about myself is I feel like I sometimes have a chip on my shoulder, like the world owes me something, that things are always harder for me and I don't understand why, though I don't show it in that sense. But perhaps there's a part of me that like feels like I always have to work harder than everyone else or that I'm just not good enough or I'm not as confident enough or I just have a lot of insecurities that I've faced and a lot of it had to do with like previous relationships, maybe my childhood. And I feel like in the most recent month or so, I've come to like the power of finally being okay with myself and like not just okay with myself, but like proud of myself. And I feel like it just took such a long time to get there because I think I am so hard on myself and I'm pretty sure many of you are as well. But if anything has, if anything COVID has taught me is like, there's a, a term that my dad says, it's also like, if someone leaves, they just leave, which someone dies, they just die. And it sounds morbid, but I think it just shows that like life is very fast paced and it changes and time is finite. So I'm not saying like, oh, you need to rely on yourself only, but I think you need to build yourself up to be really strong and capable and independent and you know, you need to take care of yourself. And I feel like I wasn't taking care of myself. Like I was not prioritizing myself at all. And I think in the few months I just like really reflected and was like, damn, I need to, I need to treat myself better. And I need to do things for myself and like build myself up because if I can do that for other people, why can't I do it for myself? But honestly, I generally just think that the reason why I'm very gung ho about telling people that they need to be capable and independent is because you will sometimes only have yourself to rely on because no one's going to do everything for you and so i think it's so incredibly important to like take care of yourself and be like be f be good to yourself and build yourself up i feel like it's always going to be a work in progress and no one has the right tools or the guidebook to know exactly what they're doing where they're going but i think my philosophy is like just always 
do good to others. And then the other thing too is find people who are good, you know, like notice the little quirks and the habits and the traits of good people, people who are kind and genuine and people who want you to be better people who support you find good people and surround yourself with that i have too many friends telling me that you know this person did this to them and this and that and i'm just like why do you surround yourself with people like that then right okay last words of wisdom before i head in (laughs) because i need to go check in for my reservation um i guess the last thing of everything that i've learned throughout my journey is trusting my gut and sometimes you don't know what you might want or maybe you don't know exactly what choice to choose but I think a lot of it is just like uncovering the different decisions that you have and understanding that like you know sometimes when you are faced with a lot of difficult decisions it also means that it's nice because you have choice right like you have the option to kind of move your life into different ways and for me I think both were good going home was good staying in Singapore was good I think I was privileged to have that choice and ultimately I just went with my gut and after a lot of like journaling and reflective thoughts and kind of rereading my old entries I realized that I had been wanting to be in Singapore for like such a long time and so this was an opportunity that I've worked towards in the past year or so and it kind of just uncovered like what I had been feeling for so long and I decided you know what I I'm still young and I don't have that many responsibilities so I'll stay in Singapore while I can and learn as much as possible and then eventually find my way home so that's really the plan and I think I'm okay with it I'm really okay with it and I am very intentional still like today I chatted with two of my friends back home in San Francisco I'm gonna call my family tomorrow and you know as my scope of work becomes bigger um, and I want to be more impactful I think the amount of like play is going to be less because I really just want to read more and like learn more and just become more smarter I would say I don't think I'm like the smartest person at all so I definitely need to do a little bit more like reading and just learning new tactical skills so yeah anyways I hope you liked my rambling I've been rambling this all morning and um, I'm just standing right in front of raw kitchen bar (laughs) so this is it it's not that obvious as you can see there's just like a bunch of different bushes but yeah what a great plug man I should be their spokesperson Emily's wise wisdoms and also a plug for (laughs) raw kitchen bar by the way this video is not sponsored so um you're just getting wisdom from emily because damn these past months have been really tumultuous and a little bit exhausting quite frankly like i've been super uncomfortable i feel like i've been stretched to my boundaries but ultimately i've learned and i think that makes me happy because i'm learning a lot of things about myself and i'm learning to be more authentic 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 to myself yeah yep so there it is this is the building here and we're just gonna go inside the way to identify it is this bridge right here and then you're like voila a bench I actually think this might be like the back door but I'm not too sure and then it's a cute little space Emily, do you pay for a gym membership, you ask? No, I'm too cheap for it. But (laughs) I'm interested in doing F45, so I'm just going to take a look. And it actually just opened, so I'm curious to see what it looks like. Also, this is a Perian Mall, by the way. It's really empty, but I mean, it doesn't hurt to try and check it out. Yep, there it is, F45. And then you also have Boulder Plus, which I think is like a bouldering gym. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna cut my hair tomorrow. I'm gonna like chop it off and just hack it all off, maybe like this length or something. I don't know. But anyways, I just got back. I hung out with my friend Tracy and it was really great. We just kind of chatted and caught up about 
how crazy both of our paths have been um, moving to Singapore and just kind of going through different jobs and finding our footing here in Singapore. I think it's been really stressful with COVID, wanting to go home, missing our family. I haven't seen my family in a year and a half and I just miss them a lot. I think there's a lot of things that I'm missing out personally and the thing that has helped me is calling home, texting them, um, texting my friends, doing video calls with them. But honestly, it's just like not the, it's really not the same. It's just so difficult. And I don't know, I feel like it's really weird that I'm living in this like parallel universe. And I know I can go home at any time. Like I have that power, but it's also after just starting a new job, like I can't do that. I have to work hard and kind of just get things figured out. And then at the end of this year, um, my reward to myself will be, you know, going home and seeing my new baby nephew. And yeah, I just miss people. Um, there's a lot of things that have been top of my mind and it's really, it just sucks that I'm missing a lot of things. Like I also just found out when my friends um, is having a kid on my birthday, like the baby's due date is on my birthday. And I was like, are you gonna name her Emily? <laughs> and then um, my other friend got engaged. So it's like, holy crap, all of these things are happening. And in this weird way, like I know my life is progressing as well. Like I just started a new job. I'm settling down here more. Um, but sometimes I do feel like I have one foot in here and then one foot out where I still miss home and I like want to go back to visit and I don't know. I think the plan is to stay here at least for a year um, in Singapore or longer. I'm, I'm really unsure, but yeah, it's hard. Home is where the people are. And as much as I love being here in Singapore, there are, far, there are far more people that I love back in San Francisco. But I guess I can also learn to love more people here too. <laughs> it just takes time and years. And um, yeah, the dating thing is interesting too because um, I dated someone or I was talking to someone on Bumble. He's really rude. Also, I think he was from Canada, but also from the US just really rude guy and I was like wow it sucks that you're also American because you're so rude <laughs> yeah anyways that's another long winded story um, but yeah um, I think I'll probably just take this weekend to kind of like finish my side projects finish some editing and um, figure out what I'm going to be doing for like the next few months to come Yay, Jane did a really good job as usual. She styled it for me and then she cut the tops of it. She always does such a great job and that's why I continue to go back to her.